Hello and welcome everyone to this live demo session on SAP ABAP on HANA CUM S4 HANA technical training with me Anubhav. In this demo session, we are going to learn about basics of S4 HANA. We will learn how can you as an ABAP developer enhance your skill set to get, get ready for S4 HANA. We will see a short demo live in the system to build a end-to-end -end S4 HANA application for our end user with a given use case. My name is Anubhav. I have total 18 years of experience in the world of SAP and I will be your trainer for this training. In this demo session, we are going to look at the agenda of this course. Who is this course for? We will talk about the overview of this training. What can you expect in next 40 hours? Followed by that, we will have a demo use case live in the system. Then we will have some FAQs, frequently asked questions by many of you in the past on my channel. And finally, we will have question and answer round. So let's get started and understand who is this training for? So if you are working as an ABAP consultant like Surya, who would like to embrace the change in the technology and make your existing ABAP program run faster on HANA, this training is going to help you. If you are a Scrum professional like Georgia, who would like to understand how SAP S4 HANA based development projects work and their estimations, this training is also going to help you. If you are working like Niels, who is in any SAP ABAP consultant or any SAP consultant, you would like to build amazing Fury applications on top of S4 HANA with CDS views and leverage the full potential of HANA database. This course is also going to help you. Finally, if you are working as a BW consultant like Mary, you would like to build CDS views for data analytics and expose them to the intelligent suit tools like OLAP tools, for example, Analytics Cloud. This training is also going to help you. Having said that, let's understand the overview of this training. What can you expect in the next 40 hours? So in step number one, we will learn the new ABAP syntax and tooling. SAP tooling have improved a lot in the last decade. We've got a lot of new tools, for example, ABAP development tool on Eclipse. We have Business Application Studio or so-called VS Code. All these tools are new to you. Many of you would like to first learn these tools before getting into the S4 HANA. So as a technical consultant, it is absolutely essential for learn the tools and the new technology, including new ABAP syntax and also the frameworks like integrated data access, fuzzy search and BUPF. In step number two, we will talk about S4 HANA details. We'll understand what is S4 HANA, its product architecture. What all the offerings does the S4 HANA gives, how it is different from classical ERP, so-called ECC. We will learn about how do you converge your custom code which you're running today on ECC to S4 HANA. We'll also learn about building virtual data models and using virtual data models in S4 HANA system along with custom code migration. In the phase three, we will learn the SAP HANA and its architecture. This course doesn't require you to have an expertise on HANA at all. If you're absolutely new to HANA, don't worry. In this, we will cover the basics of HANA and its architecture. How does ABAP system meets HANA? The important tools like HANA Studio and how to do data modeling on HANA and consume this data model to run your programs 80 to 90 times much faster using data models. In the last phase, we learn the new techniques on S4 HANA development like CDS views, AMDPs, CDS entities, OData services, and build end-to-end -end Fury application for our consumer. We will have real-time case studies and scenarios as part of this course to make you very comfortable with S4 HANA. So 
let's understand the steps for what we expect today so in our today's demo i will launch our development tool which is an eclipse development tool for simplicity i will not show you how did i install the dev tool that is something which we will cover in our next class tomorrow but in today's session we will focus on existing development tool if it is there how to connect and how to develop our first cds views in s4 hana then we will annotate our cds views with something called annotations and expose our data out on the internet using services these are known as o data services in the final step i will show you how to develop a analytic list page application which is part of s4 hana embedded analytics portfolio to visualize the data from the end user standpoint this is going to be very interesting demo so what's trending in the market what's our use case if you have already heard about the chat gpt generative pre-trained transformer it's a chatbot launched by OpenAI in november 2022 since then it has gained a lot of traction in the market and recently microsoft also announced to an integration of this chat gpt with their bing search engine to compete with google it's a very very powerful artificial intelligence driven chatbot which is being invested by many billionaires and millionaires it is built on top of OpenAI's GPT-3 family of large language models and is fine-tuned to learn both with supervised and reinforced machine learning. How the chat GPT is going to help us in SAP today? So we have got and collected the Twitter tweets regarding the chat GPT online. We have got all these tweets imported to our SAP system and we are going to help the end user today to understand the sentiments about the chat gpt and different approaches which people have tried using chat gpt online so these tweets will help us to discover the people's opinion about chat gpt and what their questions were to it so this data we have it in our s4 hana now and we will be utilizing the tweets data of chat gpt to build a analytic dashboard so in order to show you first our database table which i already prepared let me switch over to development system so you may see that this system look very different from your classical gui system this is our new development tool about development tool on eclipse we will be using this to do development on s4 hana in our next class tomorrow i'm going to show you how to set up this development tool yourself in your computer but for now, you can assume that there is a database table which contains the Twitter data about chat GPT. It contains the Twitter ID of the account from where the chat tweet was done, the number of likes on that tweet, number of quotes and reply and retweet counts. Followed by that, it has the country and city where the tweet was done from and the actual tweet itself. So basically, the Twitter data about chat GPT was downloaded and uploaded to the s4 hana when i run this table you can see there are a lot of tweets over here there are a lot of likes and retweets from different countries cities and country code along with the actual tweet itself you see it's mind-blowing so i thought of taking some real-time example which is very real to today's world okay cool so now we can utilize this information to build a simple dashboard simple application i would like to now go back and explain you the basics of what is cds view of course we are going to spend a lot of time learning cds views and other stuff in detail but since today is a demo session i wanted to cover one end-to-end -end flow so let's understand what is a cds view so cds view stands for core data and services It is used to create data models 
in S4 HANA system. These data models are semantically rich. What do we mean by that? We mean by that that we are going to add something called annotations inside the view. What does an annotation does when we create CDS view? It brings in lot of extra functionality. Yes, that is what annotation does. In a moment when I show you creating a CDS view, you will understand that more in detail. So what your SQL can do today, CDS view can also do, but more than that. That is why CDS views are the backbone of S4 HANA system. CDS views are very different from traditional views in SAP. We are going to have detailed discussion about that in our unit number 11. But this definition is enough to, for us to get started. So in order to develop now a application, the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to develop a CDS view. So we already have the data set which I already explained you in a database table called chat GPT. On top of this, we will be developing a CDS view today. And eventually this data I want to expose on the internet or as a web service because I want to develop a application which can run on mobile, tablet or desktops. And in order to do that, we will use SAP's latest UI technology called SAP Fury. But Fury apps, they are executed in the browser, in the mobile or different devices. Now, browser is unfortunately cannot talk to our CDS views directly because this is where our SAP system boundary comes. So what do we do? How do we expose data? of our SAP system to the browser, to the Fury app. And that's where we have the concept of something called OData services, which, is, which was introduced by SAP. So that is why we need to create OData service. So you will see first step, we will build our CDS view on top of this table. Second step, we will build the OData service. And third step, we will build a app. Now, in order to build CDS view and OData service, we as a developer, we will be using the tool called ADT, ABAP Development Tool on Eclipse. For simplicity, this tool is already set up today. In our next episode, I'm going to show you how to set up this tool by yourself. The step number three, however, will be done using another tool called Business Application Studio, so called BAS tool. So you see, we do not have SAP GUI anymore in the picture. So the new front end is the browser and the devices and the new development tools are ADT and BAS. Today is a demo session, hence we are just already have this tool set up. But in our coming classes, step by step, I'm going to show you how to set up this tool in your computer, your personal or company laptop for free. Okay, so let's get started and build our CDS view first of all. I'm going to switch over back and use my table to create a CDS view. So we come here to my SAP system and right click here to create a new object. So called core data services or CDS view. Let's click on next. We will give the name C CDS chat GPT or chat GPT. My first CDS view in SAP. <clears throat> Click on next, next, and we define a view now. So the moment you define a view, you can see system creates a skeleton automatically for us. In this skeleton, first of all, let's pay attention to add the rate. As I mentioned, CDS views are called semantically rich data model. So all the lines which are starting at the rate of are actually called as annotations. Annotations brings semantic information to the CDS view. They have special significance. So the first annotation is basically the name of the view, which will be generated in the background 
when you activate this object. The second annotation is basically to compare how the CDS view will compare the where clause when the data is fetched. The preserve key annotation will allow you to preserve the key of the database as or use the database key as the key for the CDS view records as well. The third and fourth annotation is basically for CDS security. We will also cover CDS security in our unit number 15. And finally, the name. So this is the metadata information or information about the, our object. And now here we have the definition of the CDS view. Let's go back on the top. And now we are going to use here the name. So let's use here. And I will just insert. So I have taken my database table name and I have inserted, use the code completion in SAP to insert all the fields of my table. Looks good. That is it. Congratulations, you just created your first CDS view. But that's not enough. We would now like to go ahead and also register our service so that we can build in Fury application. To do that, we are just going to add another annotation called odata.publish. Save it. The next thing which we will do is just activate. Congratulations, guys. You have successfully created your first CDS view within 10 minutes and also registered a service. Now, this OData service which was registered, we need to we need to register it. Basically, it was create it has created a service, but service is not yet registered. To register the service, we need to hover the mouse and copy this name and go back to another window. And register this service, which is a one time activity. So you can notice that now I am switching SAP GUI screen directly from this tool. All of this we are going to cover in basics before we start our course in coming episodes. So I'm going to open a transaction code main to service to maintain our service definition. So service is being created, generated, but it's not registered. So let's register it. Basically, we are exposing our service on the internet. So I will enter the service name. It's found and let's register this. Congratulations. Now we have successfully created our first CDS view and also register it as a O data service to build our application. Cool. As a next step, we will now develop a simple Fury application. A Fury application or a Fury is nothing but SAP's new user experience. Bye bye to old and dirty SAP GUI screens, which are not capable to run on mobile devices. That's where the true power of Fury comes. But in order to develop, we need to use a new tool called BAS tool. In the BAS tool, we are going to create our first Fury app. And for this training, you do not need to have any experience in BAS, no prior experience on Fury also, because everything I will cover from scratch. We will learn about the introduction and setup of BAS tool in unit number nine. For now, I've already set up this for the demo and I'm switching over to my BAS tool. So it's a tool which runs in the browser directly and we can just open our development space. A development space is nothing but a private space given to the developer for developing his or her objects without interfering the objects of other developers. And here is where we can develop our applications which can run on mobile, tablet and desktops. So let me close everything. And now I'm going to come here and create a new object. So let's create a new project. So we switch over back to help get started and we develop our first project by using the service which we just generated. So you can see it is loading up the best tool and I will choose start a project from template. 
we will select the SAP Fury application. We will choose the Fury elements of type analytic list page. Click on next button. Now we will have the data source where we will connect to our SAP S4 HANA system. So this connectivity is also required to be known for all of you. And I will be covering this topic in unit 10 in our course, how to connect our company S4 HANA system directly through the business application studio tool to, to fetch the data from our company system. Yes, we will also cover this in our course. So you will get a complete end-to-end -end idea of how to develop full stack applications on S4 HANA. Okay, so now it, I just choose my existing connection. This for demo I maintained already. And now I'm going to enter my view name. So let's get that and put the view name. And wow, you can see the CDS based OData service, which we just developed about a minute ago is visible over here. That's good enough to proceed further. Next, and we can just name the app Chat GPT. And I can click on Finish. That's good to get started with our first application in S4 HANA using the Chat GPT Twitter's data. Cool. So you can see now the application has been generated on the left and it doesn't require a PhD to develop this kind of application. Almost zero coding. Without any code coding experience, you will be able to develop Fiori apps at the end of this course. Cool. So within 10 minutes, we've got our first app. It's time that we go ahead and test our application. So let's preview and start our app. This will begin the application preview in our browser window. So remember, it's an application which is an analytic list page. It consists of three parts. First will be a search bar. Second will be a, um, a set of a chart, a main chart. And the third will be the table data for transactional reference. These are the three parts of this application. So you can see it's just loaded. And now we have three sections, one, two, and three. But in these sections at the moment, we don't have anything. That's okay. Now user can go and choose adapt filter. And user can say which columns user would like to filter. User can choose that. Let's say city, country. And let's say, yeah, these are the two things maybe. And you will see these fields have come over here to filter their data. In addition, user can also choose columns, show me the city, country, like count, Twitter, tweets for the cities and countries. And you can see, wow, I've got my tweets loaded for chat GPT over here. Awesome. But what if I don't want user to every time come and take the pain to select the fields and table columns. I want them to be available automatically. To do that, we are going to switch over back again and we are going to add more annotations to our CDS view. So for example, I want a selection field for country. So you add a UI annotation and I say selection field. Hey, CDS view, I would like to show my country field as a selection field on the UI, as first field on the UI. On a similar note, I would like to also create selection field position two for the city. Nice. Let's also create the columns. So we'll create line item, position one, position two, that's for the columns. And I will just put the like count as third column in the table. 
and I will also say reply count as fourth column. In addition, if you see, we want to give different labels. So we can use end user text dot label annotation and I say like count. Reply count. Country. City. All these properties we have added. Nice. Let us save and activate. This will create our transactional, more of a display report, which will be displayed now. So now when we refresh, system is computing and compiling all these annotations. And based on this, it is going to automatically generate the user interface for us. That's the beauty of this option called Business Application Studio. There you go. You can see country, city, and I've got also the country, city, like count, and reply count. Nice. Awesome. We have forgotten the Twitter tweet field. So let's also add that as a column. And I'm going to add it as column number five. Makes sense. Activate. So this time the fifth column will also appear on the UI. So I'm going to go back and refresh the page. This will enable the fifth column also on the interface. So you see how easy it is to add the annotations in our CDS view and that would lead us to automatically generate a UI without any experience, prior experience in Fury. And there you go. In addition to that, you get automatically filter criteria. So for example, I would like to search all the tweets from India. People who have tried chat GPT in India. Yes, there you go. Mumbai, Bhopal, Bangalore, Kolkata, all the cities, Delhi, Gurgaon, Noida, Isar. A lot of people are trying chat GPT all over the world. We are getting that information. Just one last thing I would like to add is a chart to show data insight about how many percentage of people are trying chat GPT across the globe based on different countries? To do that information, we need to go back and add a small chart over here. So I add a chart annotation. So in the school days when you used to create a chart, remember how we used to do? We used to put something called X axis and Y axis. On X axis, we used to put category. On Y axis, we used to put the value. So the category is called dimension. And the value is called measure. So here in this case, I will keep the category as country because I would like to show the number of tweets per country. And maybe I will then start counting the number of records based on, let's say, the uh, like count. Yes. So we would like to use that as our measure. So how many likes are coming on chat GPT on their tweets based on their countries? So to do that, now we are going to plot a chart with the dimension and measure. So let me put here the chart type. And there are a variety of charts available. So I'm going to use the donut chart. The next is I will put here the dimension properties and I will put the measure attributes. So first I will put dimension of properties. Dimension attribute is country and then I will put measure attributes as the like count. We will say that this particular dimension will be printed on the category axis. And we will say this particular measure will be printed as a data point with a row as x is 1. Fantastic. This will now define our chart definition as a donut chart. Let's try to activate. 
Now let's go back again to the UI and refresh the page. The UI will automatically detect that we have included a chart annotation. Don't worry if you are not able to digest today's demo session. I am going to teach every bit of it in detail later on. Today is a demo to show you one quick end to end use case. That's our goal. Yes. So now when we refresh, you see there is a problem. And that is, of course, because I missed out some important annotation called dimension names and measure names. So we need to also specify at the beginning what are my dimensions. So country is my dimension and like count is my measure. We would like to also go ahead and put an annotation called default aggregation sum. We want computer to automatically total for each country how many total tweet likes are there. So these are the two annotations which I missed out. And I refresh now. Now the question might come, how do you know these annotations? So guys, I will also take you through the documentation in detail when we go to the detail of this course from the beginning. So every one of you will be able to develop these applications by referring to the standard SAP documentation as well. Okay, so let's go back and search now. And voila, you can see a beautiful chart, donut chart is appearing right at front of you, showcasing the distribution. The maximum number of tweets, of course, are from US. We can also go back to settings and say, I'm only interested to see the, for example, um, you know, for a particular country or city, or I can add a filter. Yes, so we can do a lot of these stuff over here on the screen directly. So we can just maximize only the chart. You can see the distribution. So highest is US, then second country is France. Then here we have India, then we have UK, and then we have Germany and other countries are also falling up, falling in. So we can change the chart type, maybe perhaps to a, to a column chart, and you can see also the distribution through a column chart. Nice. We can do full screen. We can just see the table alone. We can go table a uh, chart alone. We can go table and chart together. And now, for example, if I go and click, uh, for example, let's say I'm going to click here India. Yeah, this this item in the chart. Watch out this table. It's going to filter out all the tweets from India. I click that. And there you go. You can see all the tweets right from India have been filtered out. So this way you can slice and dice the data by building this kind of an application. So there are a lot of powerful features in this application and we developed in just 30 minutes without any prior experience. So this is what brings the CDS view into S4ANA system. This is what allows you to do in S4ANA system. Yes, so that is how we can develop a very simple use case demonstrating the data analytics and data insight about the tweets on ChatGPT topic on internet using S4HANA. Having said that, let me switch over back to my slides to show you some of the FAQs asked by you. So do I need to have any prior knowledge on SAP HANA to learn this course? No, you don't need to know any HANA knowledge. I'm going to cover the foundation for SAP HANA in our next lecture onwards. So there is no prerequisite, no prior experience required. How much ABAP knowledge is required to learn ABAP on HANA? So if you are an ABAPR or a non ABAPR, if you have idea of DDIC, data dictionary, internal tables, basic ABAP syntax and function module, it's more than enough to learn ABAP on HANA. However, only 30% of this course initial topics would require ABAP knowledge. Rest 70% topics of this course does not even require ABAP knowledge also. So anyone, even a non abapper like a BW consultant can as well learn ABAP on HANA. I'm from BW and BI background. Can I also learn ABAP on HANA? Yes, and you must learn because S4 HANA embedded analytics is all based on CDS views. And these days, all the data analytics are also being built using CDS views. So CDS view is the core topic you must, you cannot skip as a BW or BI consultant. How much knowledge of OOPS ABAP is required? Just basic, if you know what is a class, interface, and object, it's more than enough 
to learn S4 HANA technical part. What about the server access? Guys, we can arrange a server access for you if you don't have one. If you have one, we can also guide you how to use your company server so you don't have to rush here and there. All the services will be provided right here, right now at one single place, anuboutrainings.com. Which version of S4 HANA currently we are using? So I'm using 2021 because 2022 was out in September. We are still upgrading to 2022. Hopefully during in the middle of our course, we will upgrade to 2022 also. How much of this course we spend time on CDS views because that's my main goal. So we, around 40 to 50% of this course is around CDS view topics. We have case studies, scenarios, real time use cases to take you through the entire journey like the one you saw today so that you can get very confident with practical experience in this system. Do you do I need OData experience in prior? No. I will also provide complimentary session on OData basics. If you are new to OData, you don't understand, it's okay. We will give you the complimentary session on OData basics. You easily can learn OData also. Can I take this course in video mode if timing doesn't suit me? Yes, you can. So no matter whether you go video mode or live mode, anyway, after the class, I'm going to share videos of the class with you. You can watch the video in case you miss any class or in case you're not able to digest within the class. So you can go with video mode training also if you are in urgent need to complete the course. What tools are we going to use in this course? So we will use ADT tool, ABAP development tool on Eclipse, followed by BAS and VS code in this course to make you learn S4 HANA end to end. You don't need to worry because all the setup and installation of these tools is also covered starting our next class tomorrow. Finally, most importantly, what's the process to join this course? The process is very simple. Just drop us an email on contact at anuboutrainings.com for signing up for this training. Having said that, once again, thank you so much for taking time today to join our demo session on ABAP on HANA. I hope to see you in our next class, which is tomorrow, same time. Have a nice day and goodbye.